So how do you combine all kinds of different techniques to create an image? So for instance, this one, the background I created with ChatGPT and the wardrobe I overpainted. For the hair fix, I used generative fill and painted it. I know a lot of you who maybe are not part of my platform don't really know much about overpainting. Now, this is probably more of a painting technique, overpainting, if you're going to paint something. I wanted to share with you folks what overpainting is and how you can drastically affect wardrobe. For this lesson, I'm going to use this image and I'm just going to give you some examples. I typically will use an overpaint brush and it's just in my favorite set and this is my overpaint brush. And what I usually do is I'll simply sample whatever color is existing in the area that I'm affecting and I'll just use this brush to overpaint over top of the image. It's not difficult. All you have to do is sample the colors that already exist. And by doing this, you are working on two different things. So you're working on getting rid of any distractions in your image. And for instance, like let's say this, this chair, if we want to just get rid of it, all we have to do is overpaint. And this especially is helpful if you're looking at doing a composite, whether or not you're using an AI background or you're creating your own. This just helps the AI in select subject tool here differentiate between the subject and what it is that you want to get rid of. Now, I'm working at 100% flow. You can work at whatever you want. For me, I usually just do this just to get rid of the distractions. And you can see here that it, it is quite remarkable in how very simply and quickly you can get rid of the distractions. Keep in mind that if you happen to like go over the toes like that, you can either mask it off or you can just get a little bit more precise with what you're doing. Obviously, there's a million different ways to affect your images in Photoshop now with all of the AI tools that are available. Like even, for instance, this fabric that was covering up that little step ladder that she was sitting on, you can just overpaint it to get rid of it. And these are all very, very simple, easy processes that will assist you in perhaps creating either a painting or a composite for photography. Now, I typically combine both photography, painting, AI, all of that together. I just recently started using ChatGPT. I don't know about you guys, but I felt like mid-journey was just getting so cost prohibitive. I'm not really looking to create video, so that was an area that I wasn't really interested in anyway. I do post on Instagram, but I only post what I want to post. I don't typically worry about what meta and uh, Instagram dictates I do. For instance, they want to see more reels. They want to see funny stuff. They want more TikTok type of content. And being more of a photo artist, I'm really not interested in that type of thing. <laughs> These days, I post for me what I like, not what the mass is like. I also find it really helpful when you're trying to overpaint messy hair or perhaps you are not super in love with the wardrobe that you have selected. I do on my platform have a new lesson up that shows how I overpaint and then generate hair where perhaps there was no hair before and it can be really useful and helpful in your work. Okay so once you have that done now you're essentially ready to go ahead and merge your layers so we'll just go ahead and do that. And so you can put another layer above. And if you wanted to start affecting the areas up here that you're not really in love with, let's say you wanted this piece to come up a little bit higher. Well, obviously you can, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can select it, cut it out, move it up. So let's just start with that. So if we do this and we just select this fabric area here, Command J. Then we're going to move it up and use your transform tool and just rotate it and say that you want it right about there. All right, so what do you do with the, the balance below? Well, what I would do is I would duplicate that layer and underneath it, the one underneath, I would drag that down probably to about here. 
and hit my transform tool and choose warp. And then I would just warp that portion down like about so like this here because we're going to get rid of this guy, right? And the reason that we're going to get rid of that guy is because we don't necessarily need it. So all you have to do is grab your eraser tool and you can just erase that portion like so. And if you go up to the top layer here, you can also make your brush really small and just erase the darker edges like that. Now, once you have those done, I'm just going to turn both of those off. And then going back to our overpainting, grab your brush. Now we can sample this and we can just overpaint this area. Then you can turn those back on and you can see what it is. Put it underneath put it directly underneath like that and then you can see exactly what you need to affect as far as overpainting this portion of your image okay and from here you can really manipulate the entire fabric portion by using your transform again go to warp and you're going to just pull this down We just want to get this something like right there. And that should work. That should be good enough. If we go to the one underneath, we're going to hit transform and warp again. And we're just going to move this one into a more, into a place that's going to be better. So let's turn those off again and just see what we need to get rid of. So in this one here, you can see that we need to get rid of this. And now we have a more believable kind of formation of this particular wardrobe right so if we turn this on and off we can see what it is that we're doing with this one and you can just adjust it to suit so something like that maybe bring a little bit more of the arm here back okay so if we zoom out we can see that now we have basically something that we can work with a little bit better. I'm still going to come in here and just address this little bit here. And even here, we're probably going to come over top of this. So we're overpainting that area like so. Okay, and now you have something that you can really work from. Additionally, we're going to choose this darker shadow and we're just going to come in and create that shadow underneath of the fabric because honestly we would have more of a shadow there and that's just going to really help with the believability. And so once you do all that, you can go ahead and merge those layers together like this and go into your liquify and start manipulating that shape so that it actually suits the image a little bit better. So for instance, you can come in like this. You can just adapt the shape so that it's more pleasant to the eye, like so. All right, and then obviously you're gonna use your dodging and burning and everything else to really manipulate that and make it more believable. And while we're at it, we'll just quickly come in here and work this wig so that it's not so bulbous and weird looking. And then obviously you need to start working on, like I said, your, your shadows and stuff like that. But what if you didn't want all this? So let's do another one. And we're going to choose this darker shadowy color like this. We're just going to bump up our flow. And we're just going to look at creating this dress in a more believable length maybe a little bit more interesting fant fantastical or fantasy like and so I'm just sampling the colors that already exist in this image and this just gives you the ability to essentially choose whatever you want for a wardrobe if you especially if you know your dress isn't long enough or the pose itself isn't as interesting as you had hoped it would have been, you can always come in and just by sampling, sampling the colors that already exist within the dress or the image, you can create whatever type of wardrobe 
you really wanted to have so that you don't get stuck with something that maybe you just aren't madly in love with. Okay. And like for this, the pose, as far as the knee is concerned, I'm not a massive fan. So what I would do is I would darken down the bright highlight on the knee that is sticking out here. And I do that by adding in darker colors, which will give the illusion of a different uh, body formation underneath the dress. And I'm not worried about losing the lace at all, because by maintaining different interesting patterns of light and using various brushes, you can definitely create your own fabric. You can use overlays, you can use lace overlays, you can use all kinds of different things that are going to contribute to the interest. And then once you do that, you can also go back into liquify and adjust that if you want, right? So let's just go ahead and merge these. So now if we go into liquify, we can adjust this so that this knee isn't quite so in your face and you can really manipulate the shape of the dress because she might be standing. Let's say you wanted to have her standing and you didn't necessarily want her sitting with a knee up like that. Just know that you can always manipulate all the pixels any way you want using overpainting, liquify, anything you want to really kind of build your own wardrobe, your own pose, anything if the desire hits you. So, you know, she's got her hands like this, so you could build in some kind of pedestal if you wanted to. You can manipulate her pose, her her stance, so that she's got a different, completely different pose if you don't like the pose that you got when you shot it. Obviously, you know, if you're into straight photography, this is not going to be your thing. But those of us that are more into photography art or painting or just creating art in general digitally, then this is going to be something that's going to be quite exciting. So what if we wanted to make this more of, let's say, a mermaid styled wardrobe? You can do that this way. And then you can go in and you can overpaint it some more. And that's just the reality of it. Like you can always manipulate everything that you want using these techniques. So once you're finished with the liquify, you can come in once again and overpaint that just to add in more interest into the fabric that you've now created. So that if the liquify perhaps uh, made some maybe not very interesting squiggly lines and what have you, you can really manipulate them this way. So you might want to just minimize this area. Maybe you want to just add a little bit more shape to her hip and upper thigh area like that. So let's say that you wanted to get rid of these flower things on her. Put a layer. You're going to go to your overpaint brush. You're going to rotate your screen. And honestly, you're just going to kind of paint it away. And this is another technique that I teach on my platform where you can really work with the AI in kind of educating it on what it is you really want as opposed to letting it determine what it thinks you want. So you're giving it a little bit more substance as far as what exactly it is that you want it to do as opposed to giving it free reign. So I'll just come in and paint over. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the nice thing with this technique. Okay, so once you have your overpainting of quote unquote hair done, then when you go back, I'm just going to duplicate this layer and merge these two so that it appears to be part of the image. So now, if we come in and we say, okay, can you give me some hair? And then it's going to give you a couple variations, and that's way better than what we originally had. This one is better. 
and then you can take it into liquefy and liquefy it. So I'm going to add it to this one. And I'm quickly going to go into liquefy. And just shape it so that it's a little more realistic. Like that. Okay? So now you know how to use that feature perhaps a little bit better. So let's just take a look at what we have done. I'm going to merge these two. And that's before and that's after. And now you have a lovely image that you can now composite. You can add whatever you want to the background. And I hope that these tips have helped you a little bit. And if you want to learn more exactly how I do this, feel free to join my platform. It's only $34.99 a month. Have a great day.